the next talk uh, is using different models, using Etherpad with EcoSim, again looking at the North Sea ecosystem and asking this question of how fisheries management measures uh, contribute towards the attainment of GES for the North Sea ecosystem uh, so that we know we have to manage fisheries. Um, and we can use these uh, food web models uh, to look at the interactions um, between not only the fish um, but also the, the other groups. Um, and in the ECOPAT model we have a, a huge number of groups, so it's more um, complete than say the statistical model we just talked about, where it uses all the diet information that is available to try and look at the interactions between species. And models like this, they're very useful not only at looking at food web interactions, but also looking at stresses on the system, so we, we can alter uh, the, the web in, in multiple ways to look at the impacts, and of course there are many uh, uses of the marine environment and multiple impacts uh, that we need to consider these days. Uh, and these models, as, as Laura mentioned earlier, are very useful for being able to integrate these, these different aspects. So here I'm focusing on the MSFD and the Common Fisheries Policy, the CFD. Um, so how will management towards the CFD really help meet our needs for the MSFD? Um, so we're going to try and use the model to look at how we might manage the fisheries and what impact that might have through the food web on some of the indicators that we've already talked about today. So the, the objective of the CFP at the moment, uh, the, the reform of the CFP, is to have maximum sustainable yield for all commercial species by 2020 and eliminate discards through the landing obligation along the way. And the CFP should be coherent with the union environmental legislation. You know, it's observant to the MSFD in some respects, uh, and that we need to achieve good environmental status and allow for these uses within that. So the CFP uh, uses long-term management plans, taking into account species and fisheries interactions, and then developing these long-term management plans as we speak, and trying to look at the interactions that, uh, that the group STECF did that Laura mentioned. Um, but I've just talked in the previous talk about fishing mortality, but actually, you know, vessels impact on multiple stocks at once. There's mixed fisheries out there. You know, you go and you fish for one species and you catch multiple species. So if we think about management measures, it's really the next question is what is actually the fisheries that have to respond to those management measures and how can they to try and meet the MSY targets and what impact might that have on the indicators. So in this model, it's a multi-fleet and multi-species model and it has multiple uh, interactions between the fleets in addition to the, the species. Uh, this is traditional fisheries management where we're altering, you know, we're setting total allowable catches, the, the fishery is then altering their effort in order to, to reach those catches. And then we're monitoring with indicators, which is basically the fishing mortality from the stock assessment to achieve the stock biomasses that we desire. And now we're adding another level on there with the community indicators, D1, D3, and D4. And we also need to meet the targets that will be set for those indicators. And so there's additional management for good environmental status on top of the, the focus on the MSY uh, information. So the question um, and, and the, the work that we did within this paper uh, published last year was say for each fleet, if they could alter their effort to meet the maximum sustainable yield targets, what effort would each trawler uh, need in order to reach the targets that are being set on each species? A cod had it, I'd say, place salt, etc. You know, they're catching multiple things, but they, you know, we can only alter the effort in a limited number of ways. And so you can't meet all of the targets simultaneously through a very simple changing of the effort, but you can get quite close. So we, we worked out an optimizing algorithm to say, well, we know the targets for all these species. How close can we get through just altering effort by the different fleet components? And there are trade-offs in there. So if you want to fish cod towards the target level, you have to underfish steak. You know, you can't have your cake and eat it. Um, and so now cod is generally considered a choke species and we might need to reduce that further, and therefore reduce the save catch further um, in order to meet these particular targets. But in this case, um, we were able to reach the haddock uh, mortality target. And then if we use those fishing scenarios and apply the food web model, we can see although we have targets for, I think, we're using eight species, uh, we have all the components within the model, we can, so we can say, well, fishing for those targets, for those eight species, what will happen to the other groups? And then you can work out who we're gonna win and who we're gonna lose in the model. And you see generally the top predators are winning and, and the, their prey are losing, and, and that's robust to climate in this particular case. And so while we're focusing on MSY, and through this model, we're also modeling some of the indicators. So the proportion of primary production required to sustain the catches, along with the mean trophic level, and abundance of various trophic gills, and these are all things you know that the MSFD calls for. And then some of the other indicators, like the large species indicator, which is a proxy for this large fish indicator I talked about this morning. So, 
over the last uh, couple of decades, we've reduced catches quite a lot, and therefore we're, we're, we're needing less prone production within the system to sustain those catches. And as a result, we've seen some increases in some of these indicators. So the IPTS survey data is shown there for this large species indicator, and our height cast from this ecopathic because model actually fits that, and the other indicators that I've not shown particularly, uh, it's actually fitting them quite well. So we're happy with the model performance for the indicators, um, then we can test the scenarios for the changes in fishing effort to meet the MSY commitments, but also changes to the climate, which alters the base of the model. Um, and then we can say, well, how will these indicators that we have, D1 and D4, for example, respond? And in this case, we model them forwards um, with the baselines of constant fishing mortality, constant temperature. We said, well, if we try to reach MSY, then we move up from the dotted blue line to the solid blue line, and the, the last species indicator would increase. And in this case, climate is actually pushing that further still, so we can see that we're, our targets would be robust climate. Um, so in general, reduced fishing effort to meet those MSY targets led to increases in, in size-based indicators, meet maximum length, et cetera. Increases in most of the tropic gills, but not all of them, because you increase the predators and then you decrease their prey. So the food webs are not necessarily going to uh, be sustained in, in every component. And that's quite an important message uh, for managers. You know, you can't necessarily have all your targets met because they're they're interacting. Um, but in general, the management measures should lead to, that we expect lead to declines in fishing effort should benefit the size structure of the communities, uh, but not necessarily all, all aspects of the food web. And so we published that work, uh, as I said, last year. And on the back of that, we fed into the STCF process, uh, <coughs> continuing to do so and to develop these models further. Thank you.